University of Georgia marine scientist Dr. Samantha Joy joins us now via Skype from Athens, Georgia. Dr. Joy, welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, you have disputed BP's claims that the oil from the Deepwater Horizon is almost gone. In fact, your research showing video that much of that oil is now at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. First, let me ask you, are you surprised by your findings? And what can you tell us about your recent research? Well, the use of dispersants, um, biological processes, and, and photochemical degradation at the surface all act together to cause oil to sink from the surface. So, so no, I'm not surprised to find um, oil on the bottom. Um, I think that it, 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 you know, it certainly was on the bottom, and, and it was reported by David Hollander back in July uh, in DeSoto Canyon that there was oil on the bottom there. So, um, when we went, you know, and, and started our program in, in September, um, we we were we were not surprised to find it. Um, and you know, the status is we're we're submitting papers for publication, um, you know, continuing analyses and just trying to figure out what the impact this material is having on the, the benthic um, community. We talked to Dr. George Crozier with the Dolphin Island Sea Lab about your work. He says what's left on the bottom of the Gulf might not be oil, but a byproduct from it, a dense asphalt-like substance from months of weathering and proof the oil-eating microbes are working. Crozier believes the perception of the Gulf oil spill is far worse than the reality of its environmental impact. Do you agree? Well, I think that what I just said is the same thing as what he said. The stuff on the bottom is a byproduct of weathering reactions. Um, that does not mean that it is all asphaltine. In fact, we know it's not all asphaltine. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't have an impact. Any, any, any kind of rapid sedimentation event to the seafloor is going to have an impact on sessile organisms that live on the bottom. So, um, you know, it, 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 you can have different perceptions looking at different data sets. And, and I think that, you know, looking at the data that, that we have and that others have that I've seen, um, the benthic impact is not insignificant. And far from it. It's, it's quite significant. Our viewers have some questions for you. A lot of our Facebook fans want to know if you believe there is a connection between the Gulf oil spill and dispersant use to the numerous dolphins that are washing ashore in Alabama and Mississippi. Well, I'm not a marine mammal biologist, and I think that we have to wait and see, you know, what what the toxicology reports show. Um, but you know, given that this is the, the first birthing season since the the incident, it, it it certainly isn't beyond the realm of possibility that the oil spill could have impacted um, the dolphins in some way. Um, remember that dolphins breed um, in in April and May, so they would have been the breeding season and when the, the the embryos were in the early stages of development would have been during the time they were potentially exposed to the highest levels of, of oil. Uh, that's when most of the that's when the majority of oil was on the surface was in you know May June and July so um, I, I don't think it's be it, it's it's it certainly isn't far fetched um, but I think we have to wait till we get hard data to to know um, what the cause of this this actually is. Another question from one of our viewers: What is a realistic time frame for knowing what exactly the long term damage is to sea life and the environment? Well, when you when you think about the just the, the say the fisheries impact. Um, if you if you take the Exxon Valdez as an example, um, it was you know it was three to four years after the actual oil spill before the impact on the herring fishery became apparent. Um, I, I think that in the Gulf of Mexico, the fisheries impacts are, are not something that you're going to see instantaneously because it takes a couple years of recruitment um, to to see those impacts. So any fisheries impacts that you that that could have resulted from the oil spill are not going to be apparent for at least two years and, and potentially three or four years down the road. Um, I think that you know many of the food web type impacts are, are not things that you're going to see quickly. You're going to see those uh, accumulate over time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we were just beginning to understand and identify in all of the impacts um, you know a couple of years from now. It, 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 you know, when you have an oil, uh, a hydrocarbon discharge like this one, it, 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 you, you want to try and understand everything as fast as you can, but it's such a complex system, especially once you get offshore into the blue water, that 
that there's really, you know, we don't even understand what happens at natural seeps. So how could we possibly understand and, and say with, with any kind of confidence that we know what the, the deep water offshore impacts are um, when we really don't understand wh how, what natural seeps do to, to the water column system above them? So it, it, just, it just, to me, you know, time will, time will teach us what we need to know. Um, but we have to be willing to, to make the measurements over the next few years to figure those things out. What's your estimated amount of oil on the bottom of the Gulf? Um, I, I don't have an estimate of the amount of oil on the bottom of the Gulf because the, the concentrations vary in space and time. It's very heterogeneous. It depends on distance from the wellhead, water depth, et cetera. And, and I'm not willing to take the data that I have and, and extrapolate it and, and arm wave because I think that's exactly what it would be doing, arm waving. And, and I, I, I much prefer to stick to what I, what I can say with, with confidence. And what I can say with confidence is we found this material at many places. And it, it, it's the most parsimonious explanation for finding, you know, these similar layers widespread um, over the Gulf is, is that it's related to the oil spill. Based on your findings, do you believe it's safe to swim in the water? You know, I've done no water tests um, in, in surface water, so I, I, can't, I can't tell you whether or not it's safe to swim in the surface water. And, and I've only seen a little bit of the, the data that's been generated um, on, on surface water um, levels of, say, PAHs and, and benzenes. I think that it, it's probably going to vary depending on where you are. Um, I think that it, it is something that, again, it, it's, an, it's an evolving thing. If there's oil on the bottom and a storm goes through and mixes that stuff up into the water column, the situation could change. So it's going to take constant monitoring to, to figure those things out. But I myself don't do those kinds of tests, so I don't feel qualified to say whether the water is safe to, to swim in and, for that matter, whether the fish are safe to eat because I don't do those kinds of tests either. Yeah, that was our next question. Would you eat the Gulf seafood after what you've seen through your research? Well, I, I think that, you know, again, it depends on where you're, you're getting the seafood from. I mean, some, some areas were heavily impacted, um, some areas were not. And I think that it, there's going to be a lot of variability. Some places it's going to be perfectly fine, and some places you're going to have to wait a while for the system to get sort of to clean itself out. Um, and and that's, a, that's a, a place by place you know, site by site um, situation. So you, you can't, again, you can't make broad sweeping conclusions, in my opinion, because things are very heterogeneous and, and variable. I mean, look at, look, at, look at the beach, you know, oil on the beaches. You know, the beaches weren't, con you know, continually, perpetually oil. There was oil here, but not oil over there. Um, so it, it, it's the same thing with the, with the seafood. Um, and like oysters, you know, some places that had oil in the water for long amounts of time, um, the oysters are almost certainly were impacted. Other places that didn't have oil on the, in, in the water, um, they almost certainly were not impacted. So it, there's, there's just a lot of spatial variability that I think everybody just has to take into account. And I know the people who are making the, the measurements to determine whether the seafood is safe or not, um, they are taking those sorts of things into account. Like what was the surface oil cover in this area? Was there ever surface oil in this area, et cetera? What health risks do you believe there are to all of us who live along the Gulf Coast based on what you have found when it comes to oil exposure? Well, you know, again, I haven't done much work in the, the shallow coastal waters. Most of my work has been in the deep offshore waters. And, you know, it, 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 once again, it's, it's not something that I feel comfortable talking about because I haven't made any of these measurements. Um, but you, you know, people who live there know what they've seen on their beaches. Um, and I think it's, it's sort of up to, you know, individuals to make their own decisions about what they do and where they go. Um, it's, it's just hard to say, you know, without seeing the data from each individual beach, which I have not done, um, what, what areas are safe and what areas aren't, aren't safe, because I've just, that's, not been, that's not been anything that I've been per, per personally involved in, in working on. Anything else you'd like to, to share with our viewers? Obviously, our area has been devastated by this Gulf oil spill. Anything you think is important to note? Well, I just think it's important to keep pushing for further study and you know, make sure that people don't um, you know, forget that, that this has happened because it, 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 the impacts are going to be with us for a while. And, and, and by a while, I mean years to decades. And I think we all have to realize that and, and, and keep pushing for additional 
um, studies because it, it's not going to, you can't have an oil spill of this magnitude and, and have it just go away in, in a few months. That's just, that, 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 that doesn't necessarily, you know, we all wish that would happen, um, myself included. Um, but the reality is that there are components of this, this oil that's going to stick around in the environment for a while, and we have to keep tracking it in order to understand what all the impacts are, both to human health, to the fisheries, to the deep water, to the entire ecosystem. Dr. Joy, we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to answer our questions. You're very welcome. Have a good day. You too.